Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Hopefully you can hear me pretty well. Obviously, this is a real-world, or rather, work-from-home camera test using the Poco F2 Pro. Super happy to be checking this phone out right now, and one of the reasons why is because we have a pop-up camera once again. It's, I think it's the only one that we've seen in 2020 so far, so it's nice to see something pretty different. That pop-up camera allows for the entire screen to go unimpeded, no cutouts, no punch holes whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, we're using the front-facing camera right now, which is recorded at 1080p resolution. Unfortunately, not 4K on the front, but that's okay. Let me know what you think of the quality of this camera and everything else in the comments. Uh, but I do also want to give some thoughts on the Poco F2 Pro. I just took it out of its case. You see I got the shiny white edition here. I know that there are other colors of this phone, but uh, mainly the reason why I wanted to show this thing off is because I got a new lens, and that's part of this little vlog that I did using exclusively this phone to film everything. And as you can see, the lens is an anamorphic lens. This is the Sirui or Sirua. I know that there's different ways of pronouncing that name. I think it's Sirui, the anamorphic 1.33 aspect ratio lens. Uh, so yes, you are going to see some really stylized footage of this. Let me know what you think of the footage in the comments below. I am looking to make this my main B-roll camera for the most part, but of course that means that it will crop the top and bottom of the frame uh, so you get a more cinematic look, but then it's not going to match up with some of my other lenses. You know what, for these work from home slash quarantine style real world camera tests, they're technically vlogs, so that's the reason why I want to open up the discussion with all of you regarding something that I might vlog about. And also obviously because this is a at home real world camera test, uh, you are also going to be seeing a lot of stuff from around my household, including like the plants outside. Uh, I actually am looking to do a bit of a tea session in most of my videos where I actually sit down, make some tea, have a nice little moment, and you can join me in those calm uh, moments during the video. But before we get to all of that, I do want to talk about a few thoughts I have on this. My full review on this will be coming in the next number of days as I do not only things like the top five complaints and the top five takeaways, as I'll probably call it, the top five takeaways of the Poco F2 Pro, uh, but I'll also finally do my Who Is This For video. That's generally the concept behind my continuing coverage of a device. The unboxing video did incredibly well. I want to thank all of you for watching that video and for continuing to enjoy my content here on my channel. Uh, by the way, if you are new here, thank you so much for sticking around and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But there were a bunch of different comments in that video and I did want to address it a little bit. They will play into my top five complaints when the time comes, but that's another video for another time. Mainly what some people were saying uh, was that this phone is basically just a rebranded other smartphone. Uh, this has Poco on the back, but Overall, this phone looks exactly like the Redmi K30 Pro. Okay, I get it. The Redmi K30 Pro or the K30 have been rebranded a couple of different times, or I think three or four different times, but that doesn't take away from the fact that this phone is still quite the looker. It might not feel like the most premium device, but it still feels like you're getting a good amount of phone for the price point that it is at. Four different lenses on the back, one of them 64 megapixels. You're seeing the quality of those cameras in this video right now, so let me know what you think about it in the comments. But even if this is yet another Xiaomi sub-brand device, you get a lot of Xiaomi's experience here, and it shows in the camera app. There are just a lot of different ways that you can get some pretty good footage, all the way down to a slow motion mode and also uh, a movie frame aspect, which kind of fits in with my anamorphic lens, uh, but you get these bars at the top and bottom uh, so that you can get a more cinematic look. You can still do things like 4K video recording. Uh, you can even do 8K video recording, uh, but it's not something that I would do very often, uh, even though I am now editing on a rig that can handle it. At the same time though, 8K video recording has less stabilization than the 4K recording, so uh, I tend to just prefer the smooth recording rather than just something with a lot more pixels in it. But overall, my favorite thing about this is still the fact that it's a pop-up camera. It's one of the few pop-up cameras we have in 2020, uh, and because of that, it's also one of the few full-screen experiences that we have with nothing cutting into the content. I know that this means that you're not going to really get IP certifications on here for water and dust resistance, uh, but at the same time, it's still a unique feature and I'm glad to see it come back. And it's always cool to see it just pop up and do face unlock and then go back down. It's just always a nice little flourish that this phone has. 
And then of course there were some thoughts about the screen. Now I have it off right now to show off that the always on display on here looks pretty nice. And part of the reason why is because this is an AMOLED screen. So it's just turning on those particular pixels in order to achieve a proper AOD. Uh, there are some quirks to it, like the fact that it's not a high refresh rate screen, but at the same time, 60 Hertz is still more than enough for the majority of users out there. But what I find so striking about those comments, and I wanna open up the discussion with all of you, is that this is the same discussion we have when it comes to high resolution. There are a lot of people out there who still believe that 1080p is perfectly fine. You don't really need anything higher than that for an everyday phone. And the Poco F2 Pro is trying to be an everyday phone. Now we can shift that conversation to refresh rates. Do you actually need 90, 120, 144? No, probably not. 60 Hertz refresh rates are standard. It may not feel futuristic, but it is definitely more than enough for a lot of people out there. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. All right, mask is on. You know what that means. Errands and groceries. So enjoy some of these photos of, I don't know, basically my diet. Now some thoughts on the camera quality. I do think that the cameras are doing a pretty good job here. However, uh, as is the case with a more mid-range device, you get one really good sensor, and then you get a few other ones at much lower megapixel counts, which doesn't necessarily mean the quality is bad. Uh, it's just something to keep in mind if you're just looking at the spec sheet. Now the pictures for the most part are turning out really well. I don't really use the 64 megapixel mode a whole lot uh, because it turns off a lot of the different features like HDR, which oddly enough is turned off by default. So I had to make sure to go in and hit that as auto. And the other thing I made sure to do for this video was turn off the watermark. The way I see it, the AK recording on phones like this is a little bit like picking up a manual anamorphic lens for my system. Uh, it's one of those lenses, because there's no stabilization built in, that you would use on a tripod for very specific shots that you know you can cater or control to the way that you want it to be. And as a final detail, I will talk about a little bit of battery life. Uh, since we are at home and I'm on my Wi-Fi networks a whole lot, this is not going to be a full representation of what this phone can do on the daily. But then again, our daily has really changed in this era, hasn't it? In any case, I was able to get about six and a half hours of screen on time, a nice thing to see in a phone that is about half the price of many flagships. And with the performance of those flagships, it is still something that you can consider whether or not it's the Poco F2 Pro or the Redmi K30 Pro. It's either way a pretty win-win situation for different markets. But I guess this is just my thought because let's put it this way, I'm here in the US and actually a lot of people probably in my section of tech YouTube don't have access to the Redmi phones at least not as much as people like Isa or people in, the, in Asia or in India. Uh, so in order to get something a little bit more akin to the Redmi K30 Pro, we have brands like Poco that provide uh, that version of the phone in different markets. That includes Europe and potentially places here in the Americas, just not in the US, obviously. So in my eyes, in places where the Redmi K30 Pro are not available, well, you have the Poco F2 Pro and you get a very similar experience, if not the exact same experience, it's just more people can access it. And I think that's a good thing. But in any case, this is a real world camera test. I just wanted to make sure to give a little bit more detail, a little bit more perspective on the phone as I continue to use it. It's been about a week so far uh, that I've been using this phone on and off. Let's just put it this way. There's so many different devices out right now or coming out at the moment that it's really hard to just focus on any one. And I'm doing my best with the Poco because I know a lot of you really want to see it. In any case, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, look forward to my final coverage of the Poco F2 Pro. Top five complaints, top five takeaways as I'm trying to figure out the more positive spin to the complaints video. I'm trying to have really balanced content, but they are going to be in separate videos. And then finally, I'll probably end up asking the question, who is this phone for? So subscribe to my channel for that and everything that I do here at JV. Thank you so much for watching. Drop some likes on this video at the very least. And until my next video, I would just remind you, to enjoy your tea, everybody. This is not tea, but still.